if your game looks anything like this, you are probably trying to find ways to help fix that. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the settings that affect this the most, affect your visibility, affect the game being blurry, and will hopefully improve your ability to spot enemies or just have a more enjoyable gameplay experience. This won't be necessarily focused on FPS, but just to help clean up some of the visual artifacts. There are a couple of bugs and stuff like that that I want you guys to be aware of in the short term, along with just what some of these settings do in the long term. If this video helps you, make sure to hit the usual buttons down below. I don't need to tell you that. But more importantly, if you have more concerns, make sure to post them in the comments down below or join my Discord, which is the top link in the video description. There are thousands of us in there who can help you out with your current issue. I'm also live on Twitch Fridays and Sundays. You can find those times on the screen now, along with my Twitch link in the description down below. I'm also live on YouTube as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and start fixing this image up. Now, I won't be going through these in chronological order or rather how they're ordered uh, to top to bottom in the menus, just because there are some more important settings than others that you should be worried about first when you're worried about image quality. The first one is probably the most obvious one, but nonetheless, a lot of people still don't fully understand this, and that is upscaling. Right now, I'm actually using FSR on performance. So you can see down here, I'm using FSR with, oh, it's balanced. Wow, that's better than I thought. It looks worse than I thought for balanced. But this controls the 3D resolution of the game right here. If you're wondering what the 3D resolution is, it is basically the resolution that an upscaler is running from. So because DLSS and FSR and the other options in the settings like TSR and XCSS are upscalers, they basically upscale a lower resolution image to your monitor's native resolution. So if, for example, like I explained in my settings guide, if you have a 1440p monitor and you set DLSS to say performance or FSR to performance, you're gonna be running at 50% of your monitor's native resolution, which means, as you can see right here, 50%, that you're actually running at 720p. Then whatever upscaler you choose is upscaling from that resolution to make it look as much like 1440p as possible while still retaining image stability. Uh, FSR is kind of uh, not really doing too hot in that, uh, <laughs> that department right now. And this is arguably one of the things that a lot of people tend to overlook. I know it's quite simple and, you know, if you've spent a lot of time tuning settings, you have an idea of what this is, but a lot of people tend to just smack this to whatever the lowest value is or whatever seems okay to them and then just sort of run it. But that can cause very bad issues with your image as you're seeing here. Another thing to note with these upscalers is that when you run the low global illumination quality setting inside of the quality options here, this actually causes a lot of shimmering on the shadows in game. This is alleviated if you, for example, switch to medium global illumination quality or you switch off of FSR or DLSS. So if I switch to say TSR, which is temporal super resolution, you can see the foliage is not shimmering anymore, even though I'm still running at 50% native resolution. Now there's still some shimmering artifacts in distance, but that's an unrelated issue. The bug with FSR and DLSS in terms of the shadow flickering is something that's being worked on by Mad Figure Games. I don't know. I don't know if they've put out a fix for that yet. Uh, maybe I'll check that in the editing and let you know if they have put anything yet. But I mean, it doesn't look like it. Still, there's a lot of artifacts, especially with the foliage on the ground, that don't appear uh, with certain upscalers. So I'm pretty sure that's related to global illumination quality on low and that bug that they told me about a little while ago. I also want to note too that right now I'm running frame generation with FSR and that can also introduce some image instability. So for the sake of the image, I'm going to disable it for the rest of the video. Now that I've disabled frame generation, I'm going to swap to DLSS, which is my preferred upscaling solution. And I'm going to go to say quality upscaling, which will upscale at 66.7% of my native resolution. I'll also put on the screen right now, just in case anybody's curious, the different resolution scaling percentages for each one of the settings in the upscalers. XCSS has some unique ones and a bunch of extra options for some reason, but I still got the resolutions for those and those will also be posted there. I'll make a full guide covering each one of the upscalers on, you know, which one you should use at a later time, but this will give you a good guide of where you'd probably want to be based on your internal resolution. Note that the lower your monitor resolution is, for example, 1080p, the higher you'd want to try to be with this upscaling, or even native as, if possible. That's because in much the same way that 1080p is a worse resolution than 1440p with fewer pixels, so too is running, say for example, DLSS performance mode on 1080p versus 1440p. 
because 50% of 1080p is 540p, whereas 50% of 1440p is 720p. So the base resolution is still higher for 1440p, even when using upscaling with the same upscaling setting attached. But anyway, let's clear this up. For me, I'm gonna first go to Global Illumination on medium to alleviate some of those flickering shadows because for me personally, going to glow illumination on medium or high, and I say medium or high, by the way, because they perform near nearly identically, but I'll be doing that to clear up the bug with DLSS and FSR with those shimmering shadows on the foliage, because I'd rather use DLSS than have to switch to something like TSR. Afterward, I'm going to switch to quality upscaling. This is a decent mix in between visual fidelity and a performance gain. Again, this is not for everybody, but if I was aiming for performance, this is probably where I would sit with DLSS. And also, if you are able to use DLSS, I have a video covering the new transform model and how to enable it within Grey Zone Warfare, which I will link down in the description below. Anyway, combining that significantly improves the stability of the image and there are no more flickering weird shadows on the ground anymore. Granted, I have lost a significant chunk of performance, but obviously the visual quality is so much better. Adjusting that alone with the contrast and saturation has made this into an entirely different experience, but there are still a couple other things that we want to do to ensure we're getting the best visual fidelity possible. You might notice as I walk down this here that the edges of this building are starting to shimmer as I'm getting close to them. That specific issue with image stability is partially due to variable rate shading, which I covered in my settings guide. You can see that when I switch from variable rate shading performance to off, that those lines instantly became a lot more solid and the shimmering significantly decreased, if not is completely gone on, well, this building as a whole. In my settings guide, as you can see, I had a big issue with how it presented wires and stuff like that within the game. So that's another reason why I would recommend, if possible, to run variable rate shading on off instead of running quality through performance. Quality through performance just does not offer the same sort of image clarity, nor does it have any benefit for image stability. In fact, it hurts it by quite a lot. It has that big of an issue with the image stability, and yet it barely improves your performance. So for me personally, I'm going to steer clear of using variable rate shading. If you notice for your own system, though, that you get a significant improvement from using variable rate shading on quality through performance, then feel free to use whatever is best for you. In my opinion, I would not go below quality, but performance is the only option that I was able to actually measure a very slight performance uplift from, if any. So your mileage may vary, but in everything that I saw, I, I couldn't get I couldn't get a difference. You can think of variable rate shading like an upscaling, but for the shading portion, of the render pipeline. So basically just how pixels are colored, right, on an image. Because of how aggressive it can look at times, that's why I tend to stick to off. And if you don't need the extra very small percentage boost of performance, please do keep this off as well. Finally, we've actually cleaned up most of the image issues now. A lot of things look significantly more stable than they did previously at the beginning of the video, and this is still using quality upscaling and not even running at native resolution. If you have enough performance on your GPU, I would highly recommend running your given upscaler at your native resolution. For TSR, because it is based off of the 3D resolution slider, you'll have to adjust this 3D resolution slider when you choose TSR to be at 100% for native. Alternatively, for DLSS, FSR, and XCSS, you're going to want to just switch to the option that says native AA or anti-aliasing, or for example, for DLSS, it would be DLAA. This has you still running at a native 100% 3D resolution, but it just applies the upscaling algorithm to improve the stability of the image. This is what I personally like playing at, but of course your mileage may vary. And if you need the performance from upscaling, I don't blame you. Feel free to use what works best for you. However, if we're talking about pure image stability, using the anti-aliasing option on your given upscaling slash anti-aliasing method is the way to go. Okay, so there are a couple quick settings that I want to just give honorable mentions to as well that I have covered in the past, but there may be some changes coming to at least one of them in the near future, so that's why I'm just sort of tagging it onto the end here instead. Also, this totally is not a separate recording that I'm making mid-editing process because I forgot to mention one of these settings. I don't know what you're talking about. First up is texture resolution. Now texture resolution is obvious, uh, you know, it controls how aggressively textures are streaming to their higher quality counterparts in front of you. Not all of you are going to be able to turn this up higher and it may not be recommended to turn this up higher, 
depending on the amount of VRAM that you have. Really, you only want to experiment with pushing texture resolution higher if you have ample VRAM, basically 16 gigs and up. Uh, 12 gigs, of course, can still have a chance to use high quality textures as well. But for those of you on, say, 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you're going to have a really rough time with anything above low sometimes and maybe even medium. The game will warn you at medium texture resolution about low VRAM most likely, though some people are able to slide by just under the maximum limit there and not experience any VRAM hiccups. If you've been really struggling with texture pop-in, this is the setting you're going to want to adjust, and if that's really annoying to you and you have 8GB of VRAM, it's kind of the compromise you're going to have to make with that card, unless you want to have some VRAM stutter. Next up up here is contrast and saturation. Now for me, I do run them at 85 and 110. That is my preference. Uh, the default is at 100 for both of these, but you'll quickly see why some people like to turn up their contrast. Please don't do this. I know the devs are working on a fix for this, and you don't want to have to rely on this forever. My recommendation to them, though I don't know if this is something that they'll actually do, is to have the contrast ratio sort of bottom out around here, or maybe even up here, just so that the overall scaling is way less and it's way harder to, you know, abuse through the game. There's a lot of different ways for you to, to adjust this, but just having it a bit less accessible for people to abuse would be great. But yeah, anyway, that is it for the video. I hope this helped you to figure out your clarity options, at least in Grey Zone Warfare. I know some of you may not be able to adjust some of those options, but at least you have a better idea of what you should change if you're trying to get better clarity or what compromises you should make to get a good mix between the clarity and visual performance. If this helped you, make sure to hit the usual buttons down below. You know what it is. And more importantly, if you need help, as always, make sure you join my Discord, link in description, or you can find me on my live streams on Twitch and on YouTube. I really appreciate your guys' support on the recent content. It's been awesome to have you guys here, and I can't wait to see you on stream at the times on the screen now. For now, this will be Clem. Blocking out. Later.